We're going to write the following equation in slope intercept form. We want to identify the slope of the y intercept and then we're going to graph it. Now this particular equation, this is already written in slope intercept form. The only thing we have to do here is we're just going to put in a y in place of the f of x since that's the same definition. y is the same thing as f of x. So that part's done. We want to find the slope in the y-intercept. The slope is always the number that comes in front of the x. When you write your answer for slope, you're not going to include the x. You're only going to include the number in front of the x. It's, slope is just a number only. It's only 3 fourths. Y-intercept is always the number that comes after the x and you want to use the same sign that's with it. So this is going to be negative 3. So now we have to use this information to, to draw a graph. The first thing that you want to do when you make a graph of this one is you want to first start by plotting the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be an actual point on the line itself. We're going to go down three units and we're going to make a dot right there. That's where the graph is going to begin. So to get, you have to get at least one more point on here. Once you have another point, then you can connect those and that's going to be your finished graph. To do that, we're going to use our slope. Now the way the slope works is the top number is going to be your up and down movement. The bottom number is your left and right movement. So if they're both positive, that means that you're going to go up and you're going to go to the right. You're going to do that from the y-intercept. So from the y-intercept is negative 3. From here, because the top number is positive, we're going to go up 3 units to here. And then the bottom number is positive also. That means that we're going to go to the right. So we go this direction and we get another point right there. So therefore now we can draw a line through these and connect them and therefore that's going to be our graph. Okay now for part B, the equation the way it's written, it's not written in slope intercept form so we do want to do a little bit of work to that one first and get it into the proper form. So I really want to solve for y. To do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the 6y on one side of the equation and then everything else I'm going to move over across the equal sign. I'm taking the 4x across the equals and the 12 across the equals and both of those are going to become negative when I do, when I do that. So I have negative 4x and then I have negative 12. Now I need to solve for y by dividing everything through by 6. I get y equals now negative 4 over 6, that's the same thing as negative 2 thirds. And then I have negative 12 over 6, that's negative 2. So this right here is going to be the proper slope intercept equation. So now because it's in the proper form, I can indicate the slope on the y intercept. Now the slope is going to be negative 2 thirds, the number that comes in front of the x. The number after the x, that's going to be your y intercept, so that's going to be negative 2. So now I'm ready to start the graph. So when I do the graph, again you always begin with the y-intercept. So I'm going to go down 2 and I'm going to make a dot right there. That's my y-intercept. Now when I'm going to use my slope to create another point that I can connect. Now because I have a negative this time, I need to take a look at where I'm going to place the negative. So negative 2 thirds, that can be written either as the negative is going to go on top or I can put the negative on the bottom. And that's important because that's going to determine whether I, which direction that I move. If the top number is negative, I'm going to move down. If the top number is positive, I'm going to go up. If the bottom number is negative, I'm going to go to the left. If the bottom number is positive, I'm going to go to the right. So from here, let's look at the first one. If I look at this one right here and use negative 2 over 3, that top number is negative, which means that from this point right here, I have to go down two units. The bottom number is positive so then I'm going to go three places over to the right and so now my second uh, point is going to be right there and I could connect those and I could finish my uh, my line. However, let's suppose that we instead wanted to put the negative on the bottom. Okay, well if I do that, that means that I start with negative 2 and I'm going to go up 2 because this top number is positive and then the bottom number is negative which means I'm going to move three places to the left. Well if you notice it didn't really matter which one of those I use because all three of these points are actually going to be on the same line. So it really doesn't matter which one of those that you use. Right here this is going to be your finish line. 
Okay, for part C, it's passing through negative 3, 6, and 3, negative 2. For part C, we're only going to find the slope-intercept form, not the point-slope. We do need to find the point-slope on the, on the way to the slope-intercept form, but it's only going to ask us to write the final answer in slope-intercept form. So, what we notice what's different about part A and B is that this time the slope is not given. However, we do have a formula that we can use in order to find the slope that goes through these two points. The slope formula would be this one, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. With the points that are given, I can label them either way. I can put x1, y1 here, or if I want to make this one x1, y1, it really doesn't matter. But I'll, I'll start with this one, x1, y1, x2, y2 here. I need to put these points into the slope formula and I'll get the first part of my answer. So when I do that, y2 minus y1 is negative 2 minus 6. On the bottom I have 3 minus negative 3. I'm going to simplify and I get negative 8 over 6. This fraction I want to reduce. You always want to reduce the fractions to lowest terms, especially when you're working with slope. It's going to make your calculations easier. I'm going to reduce this to negative four-thirds. So now that's the slope I want to use. So now when I come down here to the point slope formula, I actually have a choice. I don't have to use the original point that I label. If I want to use the other point, I could do that also because you can use either point and both of them are going to allow you to get the same answer for slope-intercept form. So you can use either one. Now because I already have this one labeled as x1, y1, I'm just going to go ahead and use that one. I have my slope right here as well, that's my m. So now I'm going to put everything into this formula. y minus y1, that's y minus 6, is going to equal negative 4 thirds. And I have x minus negative 3 is going to give me a plus 3 because I have a double negative happening there. That's the point slope form, but I want to put it into slope intercept form, so I have to go more and solve for y y minus 6 is going to equal negative 4 thirds x. Now when I do negative 4 thirds times 3, the 3's are going to cancel on this and I get, uh, as a result, I'm going to get minus 4. So now I need to add 6 to both sides and when I do, I get negative 4 thirds x plus 2. So this is going to be the correct answer for slope intercept form. Now for part D. They give us an x-intercept as negative one-half and a y-intercept as four. We want to find the equation of a line in slope-intercept form that has these intercepts. Okay, so first, the, probably the best thing to do is form some points out of these so we can put it into the slope formula. For this, the x-intercept always begins with the x value. However, the y value is always going to be zero. So the point that you can write with this is going to be this one right here negative one-half and zero. This one can be written as zero, four. So now I have my two sets of points. I can label this one x1, y1, x2, y2. So like I did on the previous part, I want to use the slope formula for that. So change in y over change in x. y2 minus y1, four minus zero goes on top. On the bottom, I have zero minus negative one-half. And so when I Simplify this, I'm going to get 4 over 1 half, and so you take care of that, that double fraction, top number you multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom one, and we get 8. So now the slope of this one is 8. If we want to form the equation in slope-intercept form, this is actually easier than the previous one. Now the reason why is if we look at y equals mx plus b, the m is going to be our slope, the b is going to be our y-intercept. Well, they already give us a y-intercept. The y-intercept is 4, so therefore now I know that b is going to be 4, and my m is 8. So I can put that information in here, and I get 8x plus 4. So this right here is going to be the correct slope-intercept form for the given information. This line will have these intercepts.